a hot place. And when um, uh, we, we're joined here with John Stinkley and he developed this tool many years ago for, for granulation, which is an advanced metal technique. He, he said, why don't you try the ultralight for some move? Because I was working on a hot plate. And I said, you really think I'm going to try to convince my students that there's, that they shouldn't use their $9 hot plate in favor of a tool that with the accoutrements cost almost $200. I thought, I don't think that's going to happen. Because although the hot plate was flawed, I just couldn't see clearly in my mind jumping to tool that's that much more expensive. So then I tried it. And I've used this tool for a long time because it does other things. I, um, when I used to teach metal stepping on the road, I would use it to anneal metal. And now people um, fire CNC in it. As I said, it's used traditionally for granulation and you can enamel it. So it's got a range of uses, but it still didn't occur to me, mostly because underneath this plate is a ceramic um, surface, and that's what um, I would fuse metal on or anneal on. And I didn't see that that would be, it would be awkward, it's awkward, it would be awkward to come blue on. <coughs> that's the, mm -hmm. the real deal right there. So if I was annealing metal, I'd coil metal and lay it right there and leave it for five minutes and boom, it's annealed. If I was fusing a bezel, I would lay it on there and actually just hit it with the torch plane and it would fuse because that supplies extra heat. Um, and so on and so forth. So I said, well, maybe it would be a good thing for Kumbu if we could work out a plate to sit on top of it. So I designed these. These are red brass, and this is what I, uh, uh, similar to what I used to use on hot plates, when I Kumbu on a hot plate, and John had them manufactured. So I had him make a set, one for flat things, and I would only use this if I was doing a bunch of big flat things all day long. I almost always use this other plate because most shapes, for example, rings work better in there, uh, boxes work better in there. Somehow there's a, always a better angle in that thing than on a flat surface. And what I designed it for was simple shapes. So that's how I came to a hot plate. To mention a so the rings right here, and you are in the heat, boy. Even if you have a plate over it, it's enveloping you, which sounds good today in this room. But believe me, it is really unpleasant. I can, and I've been doing this for many years. Mm -hmm. I can work on hot plates for 15 minutes, and then I have to take a 15 minute break. It's just too hot. Because of, I have to call it an accident of design, because I don't think, <laughs> since he didn't design it for Kumbu, I know that this was not why he did it, but this, because this plate is on top, there's a vent hole over here, and all the heat goes out that hole. So if you go like this, I can work like this on it all day. And it, it, I can also just about work all day without gloves, and that you cannot do on a hot plate. Plus, this is 250 watts in a hot plate, so it also uses a lot less electricity. But the real reason for me is that it's comfortable to work on. So that's how I got to this. And I mean, I'm sure you're going to go out and try the hot plate, or maybe you will, and give it a go. But if you're going to get serious about something, I believe that you will. That's the idea. So it's one temperature, and what temperature is it? Okay. The gold bond at 650, right around 630 to 650. But personally, I prefer, write that down, write this down too, I prefer 750 to 850, that range. And again, I think it's uh, accidental engineering, but with the plate on, this little thing stays between 750 and 850 all day long. I mean, it's absolutely constant temperature, no control to worry about, nothing like that. That's just what this does. And that, I know that wasn't as intense if you didn't design it for kombu, but that's the way it works out. I have a friend that has a lab in um, thermal uh, engineering at MIT, and he sends me these fancy heat measuring equipment, so I stand there recording the temperature and checking, and it really does maintain the perfect temperature.
thing I want to do since I'm talking, and my breath is going to blow it out, is just tack it down. And I, did you see the way it just mm -hmm. cracked in? That tells me it's hot enough and that everything is in working order and it's going to burnish beautifully. I just want to tell you one more thing about the thickness of the gold. This is four to five times thicker than gold leaf. Gold leaf, you can kombu with it, but I don't recommend it. It's so thin that it takes several layers. It's easy to capture air between the, the layers, which is not a problem that you want to have. And also, the second you get it on, it diffuses. So it's, it's, I, don't, I used to say it's worth trying as an experiment, but I don't even think that's true. Enameling foil is in between gold leaf and kombu foil. Um, there are several enameling places that I'm sure through ignorance, not through any malicious intent, sell what they call kombu foil, but it's really enameling foil. It's too thin. So I would suggest you get it. Rio carries a type of kombu foil. They also carry leaf, but they carry kombu foil, and this is from Allcraft. And then there are a couple places that sell gold that comes from either Rio or Allcraft. The biggest difference for me is that this is 24 karat gold, and the Rio is 23 and a half. And if I'm going to go to the trouble and expense of putting gold on there, I would prefer them to be 24 karat. Call me a snob, but I like this. So, what I've just done, I'll do it with this because there are clear differences in the shape. There's the point, the tip, and the belly of the tool, and you'll see how I use those. I'm using the tip to tack it, not the point because this tears the gold. So you use the tip to tack it down, and then I'm moving back toward the belly, or the broadest part, to smooth the gold into position. And then I'm just going to distribute it around, smooth it out, and remember when I said move it? Well, I'm moving it now so I can get to it. This is so I don't crease it when I start to burnish. Okay, now I know it's on. It's not going in anywhere. It's in exactly the position I want it. And now I'm going to burnish. I'm going to burnish from the middle out. And I'm going to try to be methodical. So I'm going to get this little end. I think I'm going to be a better holding tool with another belly on here. I'm going around that donut because I don't want the gold to come off. And if it's not burnished well enough, it will. And now I'm burnishing the middle. And now I'm turning it so I can get to the other end. This is just what I was talking about. It's fine to tip it up on the edge here. I wouldn't, it's not going to be hot on the ceramic or not hot enough. And I'm, I'm going to refrain from burnishing the top of the donut because I want to, um, I want to sand that off and so I have, don't really want to go to the trouble of sticking it on if I'm going to sand it off. Those of you with no donut can just burnish right over the hole and then come in with a scribe and just clean out the hole. Turn it in the hole and it will be on. So I've done the middle and now I'm going to go around and pay attention to the edge. And that's done. That is done. So now I'm going to add another piece that I said I'd add a piece hot. Careful when you put the tools down that you're putting them down on a hot surface and um, so they don't burn a big hole. This is my other other half of the circle. Now, you don't have to put put it on hot metal. If 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 you want it to be perfect and you're afraid you can't get it this way, take it off, let it cool, and go through the steps again. It's perfectly acceptable. And I probably did that for a long time before I did this. I'm I'm getting it lined up so I can go like this. So I can brace my hand like this and. The minute it gets hot, it's going to stick. So now, if it was in the wrong position, it, it hasn't been packed yet. So I'm going to take a breath and just pull it a little bit that way. Good. 
I'm going to lose it any time now. It's going to pass. Yeah. Okay. So we'll call that good enough. But you know, I could mess around with some more. I should go. I should go over here and get a little pull. But I think I'll stop while I'm ahead and pack it. You see that? It just sinks in. So now I'm going to go with the agate. So you can use that. Now I want to point out one more thing. Steel, the difference between steel and agate. Agate is harder. Um, steel, I, I like the shapes of the steel better in a sense, but there are places where I can only get this tip in, a certain textural ridges, rubber stamp this is great for. Um, but the other difference is that if the steel gets hot and it's clean steel, like that, that's well, that's blue in the end, but it's clean up here. This will stick to the gold, mm -hmm. which actually that leads us to believe that you can come to the gold to uh, seal, mm -hmm. because it will. If I burnish and burnish and and don't pay any attention to the amount of heat this is getting, it will turn blue. That's an indication that's very hot, and then the gold will start to stick to it. However, if you polish your your seal burnisher and then intentionally let it oxidize like this, it won't stick to the gold. So that's a, that's a good tip. But I like to have a couple of different ones in here. So you get the idea. I'm just putting the second piece on and burnishing. This is a broad area, so I think I'm a little better off with the steel. And look at that go. It's getting paler by the minute. Ah, there we go. There's an opportunity. I tore a little corner of it here. So what I'm going to do is brace this one on this one and just flip this, if I can, flip it down to fill up that hole. And it's not going to go, but I could take a little piece like this Like that, kind of more than me. And well, I'll put it there. You get the same idea. I just dropped it there. I'll drop a couple pieces. So you see that if um, if you need to patch it, you know I like little bits of light coming through. So very often if I tear it inside, I leave it. But you can patch it, and I guarantee you won't know that it's been patched. It blends right in. 